Hi, I'm political analyst and Citizen Voice President Gary Dietrich, now to help you make sense out of Proposition 40. Coming up on your California November 2012 ballot. And my friends, this one can, in some people's minds, be a head scratcher. So we're going to help you wade through this. Let me help you understand just a little bit of background, then we'll get to our guests and help make it crystal clear. Here's the deal. Every 10 years, new lines are drawn in California for our legislative districts, for our assembly, and for our Senate. Some people thought those lines weren't fair. And so particularly those in regards to the Senate district lines. So we're going to put this on the November 2012 ballot. Qualified a proposition, now Proposition 40, for that. The California State Supreme Court weighed in on this decision and said those lines shall stay in place for 2012, even with this going on the ballot. The people who were supportive of this wanted them suspended temporarily. That didn't happen. So here we are voting on Prop, uh, Prop 40, which would keep in place what the Citizens Commission drew for those state Senate lines. You still with me? We're going to make this brief. To help us sort it all out is Helen Thompson with the League of California, League of Women Voters of California. Helen, thanks for being here today. We really appreciate it. So why do we have Prop 40 and why should people still care about even voting on it? So we have Prop 40 because once something qualifies for the ballot in California, it's on the ballot and there's no way to remove it. So that's why we have it, and why we need to care about it is the way that referendums are worded in California. In California, referendums are worded so that they say, do we want to retain a current law or the current, in this case, the current set of maps? And so we need people to vote yes. We need people to vote yes for the maps drawn by the Independent Redistricting Commission um, that, that the Supreme Court has said were, are good maps and that the Supreme Court has said the process used was legal and, there, and was good. All right, now, the obvious question. What happens if people vote no? If the no side prevails on this particular measure, then the Supreme Court will appoint special masters who will then adjust the lines. Though they could also just say, that the, the lines are okay, but it's going to cost us money to have people go through the process of redistricting again. And the bottom line is that the people who put this on the ballot were those who wanted the lines redrawn for this election cycle, correct? And then when that didn't happen and the Supreme Court said, well, regardless of what happens on Prop 40, those Senate districts that are in place for 2012, the new ones, they're going to stay in place. The, uh, the people who put this on the ballot then dropped the campaign essentially and said, we're not going to pursue this because you're going to go ahead and let these new lines take effect this fall anyway, correct? That is correct. Their goal was to have different lines for this 2012 election. When the Supreme Court said, no, those lines are going to stand, the process was good, the lines look good, then they dropped their campaign. It was a small group of, of politicians that were unhappy with the Senate lines as they were drawn by the redistricting commission. Yeah. Well, to be fair about it, I mean, to be fair about it, there was a large contingency of people on a certain political perspective that really weren't happy about it, led by a number of, of political figures. But the bottom line here is that if people vote no, the lines could change for the next election cycle. But the ones that are in place now would stand for those voted here in 2012, 2014, 2016, and beyond. Conceivably, if people voted no, conceivably, the lines could change then. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. All right. So it is important that people vote on this. And you're obviously advocating a yes vote. The people that put this on the ballot are saying, well, it's sort of a fait accompli for 2012. My assumption is they've probably dropped it, but could conceivably come back in 2014. Um, yes, they have actually said their goal was to get something changed for 2012, and without that, they're, they're waging no campaign. Okay. So, friends, this is one of those on the end of your ballot. I know it's the tail wagging the dog, but redistricting is important. It does affect a lot of things that happen in Sacramento and in Washington when it comes to the House of Representatives and their redistricting, but this specifically applies only to California State Senate District lines. We encourage you to cast a vote based on your best knowledge. And of course, in general, it's important to register to vote and vote on November 6th because, well, all these matters affect all of us in California a great deal. Check out citizenvoice.org for all your election needs. We're here to help.